Welcome to Excel Med Trick number 1,284. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Med Trick 1,283 to 1,285 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in last video, 1, 2, A3, we talked about the amazing max ifs and min ifs function. In this video, we want to talk about the history of a max or min with conditions or criteria calculation. Now we're going to see five examples here. Here's our data set and our goal is from the sales column in this cell right here calculate the min and this cell calculate the max based on one two conditions. Now if we're using D functions which have been around for a long time it requires that we're not copying the formula and that you have a proper data set. So when you're using the D functions, you if you create your formula here, you actually cannot copy it down. Ah, but if it's a single cell, you have a proper data set. In particular, if you have complex criteria, D min and D max are awesome. D is for database. Min is for minimum tab. Now the screen tip says database. That means you have to have field names at the top. I'm going to highlight those, control shift down arrow, control backspace to jump back to the active cell, comma. Field, that's the field you want to do a calculation upon. One of these, I could type the number 5 because it's the fifth column. I could click on that cell so it knows it's the sales. Or I could hard code it in. I'm going to hit F9, in double quote, put sales, comma. Criteria. That means you have an area off to the side, and you have to have field names at the top and your criteria below. Now notice we have condition, and then right next to it in the same row, a second condition. That means we're using AND criteria or doing an AND logical test. That means I have to find a record that has both SUE and QUAD. Now, the fact that we have to put field names and the conditions or criteria below, that's the reason that we can't copy the formula. But if it's a single cell, man, this is easy. Close parentheses and Control Enter. There is the min value that Sue sales rep had for selling the product quad. Now, D max, it's the same thing. D is for database. Max is for max. I'm going to highlight the entire database. Control shift down or control backspace, comma. And I'll show you if I put a 5 here, it'll work because that's the fifth column, comma. And the criteria, we have our range over here. Close parentheses, control enter. That is easy to do. The maximum transaction sales Sue had selling the quad was 2,123. Now, notice over here I had to put equal Sue. All of these other formula solutions, I will not have to do that. And the reason why is for database functions, and I put an apostrophe and then an equal sign, because if you put the equal sign and the text, it thinks it's a formula. But that says find exactly Sue. If I were to simply type out S-I-O-U-X for database functions, D min, D max, it would do an approximate match or a contained search. All right, I'm going to delete that. All right, so that's one way, and it's been around for as, as long as I can remember. Another way we did min and max if, and this is before Excel 2010. We just combined the min and the if right together. Equals min and then if function right inside of it. Now, the logical test, I have two sets of criteria. So I'm actually going to have to compare the sales rep column to Sue and the products column to quad. So the first logical test, and I can pick either one, product or sales rep. I'm going to pick the sales rep. Control Shift down arrow F4 because I'm locking it. And we do a direct comparative operator operation on that entire array of values. I say, hey, are any of you equal to relative cell reference Sue? Now, anytime you do an operation, whether comparative or math, on not a single cell and another single cell, but rather an array of values against a single cell or an array and against an array, you're doing an array operation. And you always have to look at the argument for the function and ask the question, will this argument handle this array operation? This one does, but only if you do the special keystroke 
Control Shift Enter. We'll see in just a moment that a function like aggregate is one of the rare functions that has an argument that doesn't require that special keystroke. Comma, value of true. Well, I'm not ready to put all the values in because I have a second condition. And this is the part that made these types of formulas difficult before 2010 and 2016, is you had to know to put a second if here. Now, the logical test, our second column, product control shift down on F4, and I'm asking the question, are any of you in that entire array equal to quad? Now, I'm going to lock this with the F4 key, comma. And now we finally get to values if true. That's the entire sales column, control shift down on F4. Now, comma, I do not want to put anything for false, backspace. I want to leave that argument empty. That way, the if function will automatically put false values in there for this entire column when it doesn't find a match for both criteria. Close parentheses, close parentheses. And let's just prove that to ourselves. I'm going to click on the min number one argument. And if I hit F9 to evaluate it, wow, that's a huge array of falses. And you can see right here, there's a number. That means that number found Sue in the sales rep column and Quad in the product column. Those falses are our filter. And why is that important? Control Z, because the min function is specifically programmed to ignore false values. So what we've done is we filtered and just put the values that match Sue and Quad into the min. And now the min can do its job. Now we have to use that special keystroke, Control, Shift, and Enter. Immediately look up to the formula bar, and you have to see if the curly brackets are there. Those curly brackets are Excel telling you it understood that you did an array calculation. Now I can double click and send it down, go to the last cell, and hit F2. It's got all of the ranges correct. That is amazing. That's how we had to do it for many, many years. Now watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this in Edit Mode, Control-C, Escape, and come over here, put in Edit Mode, and Control-V. And I'm going to change the in to ax. There we go, max. Now it has the same two conditions. It's going to filter the same way, but the values will go into the max function. Control-Shift and Enter. Double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. That is pretty amazing. Now, that was the max and if. In 2010, we were given the aggregate function. Now, let's just look at the aggregate function. It has a bunch of functions, including max and min. But the problem is functions 1 all the way to 13 do not handle array operations. But 14 to 19 will. No problem. We'll use large one for max and small one for min. So I select 15 to tell aggregate which function I want to do comma, and since our filter in this array operation is going to be error values, I'm going to use number six, ignore error values, comma, and our array. There's five functions in Excel that have arguments that can handle array operations without using the special keystroke control shift enter. And there it is. Array will do it. Now we want all the values that we're going to eventually filter. Control shift down on F4. And we're going to filter it using division. Open parentheses, open parentheses. And we have the same two conditions. And it doesn't matter in which order I select the columns and do our comparison. I'm going to select sales rep. Control shift down arrow F4 equals direct array operation. Are any of you equal to Sue? Now that'll give me trues and falses. Now I'm going to close parentheses and multiply times the second array operation. This is going to be product. Control shift down arrow F4. Are any of you equal to? And now I'm going to say that quad F4 to lock it. Now what this will do, if I close parentheses and then close parentheses. By the way, the second set of parentheses is to force multiplication before division, because it would do it left to right if we didn't have those extra parentheses. But guess what? True times true will give us 1. False times true. True times false or false times false will give us 0. So boom, when I highlight this in F9 to check it out, there's our array of zeros and ones. Zero in the denominator will give us a divide by zero error, and that will be our filter, Control-Z. 
And notice right here, there's our array. When I hit F9, there's our filter, divide by 0. You can see there's a number right there. That means we met our two conditions, Control-Z. Aggregate number 6 will do its job to ignore those errors, comma. And we're using the small function, so our k is 1. Close parentheses, and we don't have to use Control-Shift-Enter. You can use Enter or Control-Enter. Notice no curly brackets up here. Double click and send it down. That is amazing. Same exact values. Last cell, F2. The cell references are looking good. Now I'm going to copy this. In edit mode, Control C, Escape, Control V, and all I'm going to do is change 15 to 14. That means large. Control Enter, double click and send it down. So in 2010 or later, we did it that way, but. Now that we're in 2016, we have our fourth formula method, and it is by far the easiest. I simply say min ifs, the entire min range, control shift down our F4, comma, criteria range. It doesn't matter which column I put in first, I'm going to put in product. Control shift down our F4, comma, and now I'm going to go get my quad for criteria one, F4. Criteria two range, that's going to be our sales rep. Control shift down on F4, comma, and I'm going to go get Sue as the criteria. That is so much easier than any of the ways we did it before. Well, except for D min, but if you're copying, this is the way to go. Double click and send it down. Last cell, F2. Cell references are looking good. Now I'm going to cheat again. Highlight this in edit mode, copy, come over here and paste and change the in to an ax, max ifs, control enter, double click and send it down. That is simply amazing. Now, there has been one other way uh, that we could do this. Now, the advantage to formulas is very straightforward. If the data will change and you want your solution to update instantly, that's why you use formulas. But if you're doing this a one-time deal, we have the amazing pivot table. Proper data set, empty cells all the way around. There's a single cell selected. Insert pivot table, or I'm going to use the keyboard Alt-N-V. I'm going to put it on this existing sheet, maybe somewhere like M10, and click OK. Let's scroll over here. Now we're going to have to do a few different steps. I'm going to drag sales rep down to row. I do not like row labels, so I immediately go up to design, report layout, outline, or tabular. Now I can filter sales rep, and I'm going to uncheck everything. Chuck, Joe, Sue, that's the sales team we're interested in. Click OK. Look at that. Now I'm going to drag product down to filter right at the top. I don't want all of them, so I Simply come down and select quad, click OK. Now I drag sales once and twice. Right click the first sum column there, and I want to say summarize values by, and this one is min. Right click, and you could do value field settings instead. Choose your max, and then change the name up here, backspace, click OK. And there we get the same results. So a little fun history with calculating min and max when we have conditions or criteria. D min, especially when you have complex criteria, which we will actually see in the next video. And you're not copying the formula. That has been around as long as I can remember. I actually did a Google search trying to figure out when the D functions came into Excel, but I, I couldn't find it. I even looked in some of my older books, and I couldn't pinpoint. But it goes back in, as far as I can remember, into the 90s. Min and if, that's been around forever also. Aggregate, that was 2010 or later, and now 2016. And moving forward, we have min ifs and then pivot tables all the way back to the 90s. Now, in next video, 1285, we'll see how to do a min and max calculation when we have AND criteria and OR criteria. That means we're doing an AND logical test and an OR logical test in a min or max calculation. And we have some amazing solutions, including a great new use for min ifs and max ifs. All right, we'll see you next video.